I don't even know what to call it, a work of art. Um, and I'm gonna give Andrew the microphone and we're gonna look at these books that he has made. Uh, so this project I'm calling uh, Universal Constructors, and as you can see, it's a series of books here. So there's 10 out of 16 versions. Um, Universal Constructors, I took um, the name directly from John von Neumann's um, idea of self-replicating machines. Um, von Neumann had his book published in 1966, and the ideas were used a lot in um, even 3D printers like the RepRap project, um, basically a machine that could replicate itself. And we found a lot that, or there's a lot of people who write that it even applies to our own DNA. So um, very simply is trying to explore this idea and in a very simple object such as a book. Um, and so following from von Neumann's ideas, there's three parts to a machine. There's the blueprint, there's the reader constructor, and then um, there's the copier. And if you think about it, for these books, the format itself, um, as you can see, is its own dimensions. So the limits of how many pages, the limits of um, basically the format that's prevalent in publishing, um, but also, what I found interesting in this project is that this object that looks so alien and minimalist and cold in a way has so much labor wrapped up within the object. So um, I was basically using a code to uh, automate a very popular but commercial um, design program called uh, Adobe InDesign. But the code itself was open source. So you already have these two sides fight with each other and when these basically self-publish themselves, they go through all of these steps, which I found um, with print-on-demand printers that actually involved a lot of human labor. And what I found was that when you put in a very small order, you actually get a lot of errors coming out of the system. And um, that was interesting to me. But the minute you put in a large order, contrary to what you believe, um, there's a lot of human hands involved and it actually becomes more perfect. So as we go through these, you'll see that here, this was a local printer here in New York City. Um, they actually rejected this copy because this was not deemed perfect in their eyes. Um, whereas the one on the left was. And these types of um, just small decisions were very human. They could not ever be automated in a way. Um, as we move down, um, you start to see just like playing with the formats. This is actually a printer from Pennsylvania and very automated. Um, i just move you down the line. Yeah, these are very high production quality, but still um, highly automated and prone to error. So if you think about this idea of self-replicating machine, this can basically start to mutate, in this case, um, with the idea of a circle or ellipse. And you get these, yeah, just as you see there on the, on the side, um, some very interesting artifacts um, that you could not have planned for. So these are part of the mutations in the system. You can also see in the back some mistakes here as well. Like, uh, but here also is another uh, interesting, just to me, the artifact that the UPC or basically the commercialization of this object was required in order for it to run through these systems. Um, and that's something that I'm exploring further, whether I can fight against that or whether that's required. Um, as we move down, you can see actually here's one very obvious error between two copies that came out of this um, automated system. So you see here, this is something that no professional printer in Manhattan would ever let out of, their, out of their shop. This would never have made it through. This is only possible in a way, right? right through the um, automated systems. She's asking why. Oh, sorry. Oh, because um, I actually tried to get them to, so there's actually a printer um, here um, called Best Type, and I was working with Dane there, who was very professional, and I was trying to get these results from them, and every time we tried to do it, it's just, it was like almost painful 
for him to have to do this. And I totally understand because um, my day job is within graphic design and interaction design. And it, you, unlike art, you actually are trying to, trying very hard to make something that's very perfect, even though that's not really possible. But it fights against basically um, art practices in a way. Um, so he could not let that through and I totally respect that decision. Um, so yeah, these, these are 10 um, formats. Um, and actually there's a few others over here that we can take a look at. So <laughs> it was interesting to me that these, they, they start to become a little sculptural um, as objects. And um, they, visually when you see these, you, you're seeing basically going back to von Neumann's ideas, um, just you're seeing all three parts of blueprint, the reader and the copier, um, basically at work. And then, you know, the systems also, you see visually the limits of what is possible in print-on-demand publishing today. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, here you have basically the smallest format possible. Um, and here you have sort of the largest possible. It's like a phone book, basically. Um, but based on basically the, um, the rectangle. So going back again, just to wrap up on the idea. The blueprint here is the dimension of the book and the limit of the spine. Um, the reader is basically the code itself, um, this open source library called um, bazel.js. Um, it's, sort of, it's basically a processing or p5.js. Um, and that in conjunction with InDesign basically reads the dimensions and then creates each page um, in steps per page to create um, all the layouts. Um, and then, yeah, basically the copier is the code itself, but running through all of the formats possible in um, print on demand. Um, this could also apply in the next version to furniture. It can apply to objects, sculptures. Um, but it's, in this form, it's, it's I feel, the, the simplest. So yeah. Thanks.